Hello everyone. So today's video is on the new chemical entity that is on the saro glitazer. So what is a saro glitazer? You may get this one as a important short note. So it's already I have told it is a new chemical entity. So it's a dual agonist. It has got a dual agonistic activity on the subtypes alpha and gamma of PPAR receptor. Okay, so predominantly it is having a this alpha agonistic activity. This is predominantly. and a moderate activity on gamma PPAR receptor and predominantly on alpha. So agonistic activity on the gamma, so I will make it here. Alpha. So, agonistic activity on the EPAR alpha receptor like fibrates, it is going to lower what the triglyceride level mainly, also lower the cholesterol level, total cholesterol level and a little bit raise the level of HDL. And just like a thiazolidine dion derivative, what they are going to do? like thiazolidine dion's derivative they are going to reverse the insulin resistance and thus lower the plasma glucose level So, if you want to watch the detailed video on the fibrates and on thiazolidine dion derivative, so link will be given in the description box. You can check it. Okay, now this group of drug, they have got both the activity. They are going to lower the triglyceride level and they are also going to lower the plasma glucose level or blood glucose level. Okay, so they have both the activity. But remember one thing, chemically they are totally different. They do not resemble with this fibrate and they do not resemble with this thiazolidine dion. So chemically they are totally different from the, so chemically they do not resemble. They are different from this fibrate as well as thiazolidine dions. Now, how they are going to act? What are their mechanism of action? So, before going for the mechanism of action, you must know a little bit about the PPAR. So, what is this? The full form of this, it is a nuclear peroxisome proliferator receptor protein. So, they are the nuclear protein. Jaha pe beta nuclear word aa gaya. That means they are going to regulate the transcription of genes. Okay? Now, how many type of uh, P power they are there? Do to maine bata diye. Alpha and a gamma. So, they are of alpha, beta and gamma. So, alpha, alpha that is mainly expressed in the adipose tissue, heart, colon, muscle, kidney. Okay? Whereas this one beta, they are expressed in many tissue but mainly in the brain, skin, and adipose 
Trishu. And where is the gamma? Gamma that is mainly expressed in pancreas, heart, colon, muscle. There is an overlapping kidney, spleen, macrophages, and the adipose tissue. So this is a brief introduction. If you get a short note, you may write about this. This is just for a knowledge sake. You must know there are the three type of PPA receptor. They are there and what are their sites. Otherwise, if you get a short note, you don't have to attempt this. You just write the mechanism of action. So they are the dual agonist. So what they are going to do by having the agonistic action at alpha and by having the agonistic action at gamma. Let's see in the next slide. So, by having a agonistic action at P par alpha, what they are going to do? They are going to increase the expression of certain genes. Okay? What are those genes? They are going to cause the over expression of the genes, which is going to regulate the LPL. So, over expression of this. So, what, what this um, does? LPL. LPL, it causes the lipolysis of the triglyceride. So, triglyceride that is converted into free fatty acid which is used by the muscle as a source of energy or which get deposited in the fat or adipose tissue. So, number one is this. Number two is it is also going to cause the over expression of LDL receptor. So, LDL receptor especially on the liver. So, what they will be doing is so over expression of the LDL receptor if they are there. So, LDL from the plasma will be taken up. So, there will be decreased level of this. So, it is going to decrease the level of cholesterol. Then it is also going to increase the expression of APOA. Now, this APOA what it is going to do? It is going to cause the activation of HDL because this get incorporated with this. So, by this it is going to cause the marginal increase of high density lipoprotein. So, another thing is, so all these, it is going to increase the level of all these. Expression of the gene which regulate all these, LPL, LDL and APOA. But there is a one, it is going to decrease the expression of the gene which is APOC2. So, APOC2, what is its action? APOC2, it inhibit the lipolysis. But by decreasing its expression, this drug, it is going to increase the lipo. Lysis. So, lipolysis, if you get, it is going to decrease the level of triglyceride. So, this is, it is a P par alpha agonistic activity. Now, coming to, it is a P par gamma agonistic activity. Now, what they are going to do? They are going to cause the improved transcription of insulin responsive gene. Okay. By increasing this insulin responsive gene, what they are going to do? They are going to improve the insulin sensitivity. Kaise karenge insulin sensitivity? By increasing the expression of GLUT4 and translocation of GLUT4. So, what will happen if expression and translocation of GLUT4, if it is more, then glucose uptake in the muscle and fat that is increased. So, by that it is also improving the insulin sensitivity. Another one is it also inhibit the hepatic gluconeogenesis. It also does that. Then it also inhibit because ad on adipose tissue also they are there. So, it also inhibit the lipolysis. So, this is about the mechanism of action of this SAR glitazer. Now, where we can use this drug? So, this drug, it is going to decrease both. Triglyceride bhi ye kam kar ra. You can see the previous one. So, it is going to decrease both. Triglyceride, cholesterol and margin increase of HDL. And here, it is going to lower the blood glucose level. So, where we can use this one? Mostly, it is indicated for diabetic. Yaha pe diabetic ho and dyslipidemia. So, main indication for this drug is so, indication of this drug is, it is diabetic dyslipidemia or you can say 
uh, it is used in patient with hyper triglyceridemia in type 2 patient who are not showing any improvement with the statin usme hum de sakte hain so this drug it is approved by drug controller journal of india for the treatment of hyper triglyceridemia with type 2 diabetes mellitus or you can say diabetic dyslipidemia in june 2013 now this drug apart from that it is also going to improve some other things also like there's improvement in hepatic steatosis inflammation and fibrosis it also takes care of improvement in enzyme level alanine amino transferase level so another indication for this drug or the approval is given to this drug by again dcgi for dash and NAFLD. So this is non-alcoholic steo hepatitis. This is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So approval it is given in March 2022 for this indication. So you may get uh, MCQ for this and this drug it is because it is approved by which Drug Controller Journal of India. So this drug it is mainly used. It is used only in our country in india so approval is given only to be used in our country so what are the important side effect with this drug so this is so far side effect gastritis and the weakness so already after transaminase level it is going to cause an improvement in that and though uh, with the pioglitazone or thiazolidine dion derivative it causes a fluid retention that is with the thiazolidine dion derivative but this drug it does not cause the fluid retention so no edema and no weight gain is seen with this drug so that's all about the uh, drug saroglitazone so if you have any query you can uh, ask your doubt in a comment section that's all about this topic